All right, I've been asked by HiBoost to do a review on their HiBoost 4K Plus cell phone booster. And this particular model covers 4,000 square foot of your home. Uh, they have other models that are 10K. They have models that uh, will go in your vehicle also, RVs, things like that. Uh, they got them for commercial and industrial use also. This is going to help us here, uh, hopefully, uh, increase the signal strength here in our house. Um, outside we get maybe one or two bars on my phone. Uh, we're going to go over that in a little bit here. Um, so we're going to do a quick unboxing and I'll go over through, I'll go over some of the features and do an installation. Alright, so what you get in the box is your booster unit itself. You get your uh, 50 feet of cable with end connectors. You get your directional outdoor antenna. You get the mounting hardware for the antenna. You get the mounting plate and screws for the booster itself, power supply, and you get this little adapter here. And what that is for is on the top of the adapter or the uh, booster here, uh, you're gonna have a place to put two indoor antennas if you'd like. Now the unit itself here has a built-in antenna. This face right here is an antenna itself. Uh, for the reception for the inside of your house. Now if you want to add another one, which I'm going to do, I'm going to plug it in here. And if I wanted to add even an extra antenna, I would use my adapter and connect it here. I told Highboost that I needed an extra indoor antenna and they were kind enough to send me an extra antenna with the mounting plate. All right guys, I am on my front porch. We are gonna check for signal strength. Now I have an Android phone. What you wanna do is go to your settings, go to general, go to about phone, and then go to network. And there it says it shows signal strength. I'm getting about 114 to 116 dBm. Um, that is terrible. You get a lot of dropped calls when you get about 113, 115. Um, the lower that number, the better reception you're going to get. A minus 60 would be just about perfect. So we are at a minus 113 right now, which is horrible. Uh, I can still make calls, but barely. Uh, we want to get this reception and pull it into the house and amplify it. And uh, hopefully uh, it'll improve our signal strength in the house. It has an aluminum alloy chassis that acts as a heat sink that will keep the electronics inside cool. Front has LED indicators and an LCD display for real-time readings. Left column displays all the frequency bands the carriers use. The right column displays the power output in decibel milliwatts. The middle two columns display the uplink and downlink gain in decibels. All right, so I decided to mount the booster unit right here on an angle. It looks like a, a, a strange place. Normally you would mount this on a wall and project it into your living room or your living area. Uh, in my situation, this is the corner here of my living area going out this way. So if I mount this on a 45 degree angle like this, um, it'll project out into my living room area where I need it. Um, and in order to do that, what I did is I made this piece here and I mounted the mount mounting, mounting plate onto this piece to, so it would go into my corner here and I'll show you how I made that. In order for me to mount the high boost in the corner, what I did is I got a piece of 4x4, four four, cut a section of that out, and then cut that on a 45 here on my table saw, mounted the mounting plate here to it, and these screws here that you see that are slightly countersunk are going to go into the corner. Now they're not directly in the middle here, but off to the side a little bit because I know there's uh, two by fours here. And that's how we're going to mount it on the corner. All right, so we want to mark how high we want this. I would suggest roughly eye level, um, about right there. So about now in the back, you're going to have this mounting. Uh, little bracket here. So right in about in the middle of the unit, I just want to put a little mark here on the wall. 
just so I know where the middle of this booster, booster unit is going to be. All right, guys, now we want to mount this right here in the corner. And we're going to do that right now. Now we should be able to hang the booster unit right on there. Just like that. All right, so I have the booster unit mounted. Um, I got two options here. I can either put my wires here and go right up this corner all the way up to the ceiling, put a hole in the ceiling and then bring the wires up in there and then pull them up when I'm up in the attic. Or in my situation here, directly behind this wall up until about right here behind this wall is my laundry room. So my idea here is to put a hole here, put the wires through the wall, on in, going into the laundry room and then up the laundry room wall into the ceiling uh, and then continue on in the attic. Uh, this way I won't have wires going up like that into my uh, ceiling. I mean, it's not a big deal if you do mount it on, on the wall here going up into the ceiling, uh, you can always cover them up. They have those little plastic covers that cover wires up and uh, makes it look uh, nice and tidy that way, especially in the corner. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make a hole here and put the wires through there going into my laundry room. That way nobody can see the wires going up like that. All right. All right, I am ready to drill my hole. I just have to mark where I'm gonna put it. Um, I don't want to put it up here too high because I don't want the wires to um, be too exposed. But I'm going to put it about right here so the wires will come up a little bit and then back down into the hole. So we are going to put it right about here. Because I'm pretty sure to the 2x4 right here so I should clear it. Now whenever you're drawing into a wall you have to be very careful. Don't just plunge into the wall. As soon as you break through the drywall, stop uh, and look in the hole. Stick a screwdriver or something in there and make sure there's no pipes or wires and things like that. Get a flashlight, see if you can look in there and uh, make sure you're not going to hit anything, basically. So this here is a special drill. It's a drill tip and then it cuts on the side. So I can, once I go in, I can enlarge the hole. Okay, I just poked through and I pulled it back out. I don't want to go plunging it in there because we don't know what's back there. So, get yourself a screwdriver, stick it in there, move it around, make sure there's nothing in the way. Now we want to get a flashlight and look in the hole and make sure we don't see nothing. Nothing is in the way and it looks like I can plunge right through to the other piece of drywall on the other side where is my laundry room. Okay. All right, so now that we know there's nothing in the way back there, no wires, no pipes, no nothing, I have to go through to the other side and just poke through. So I got the longest drill that I have. And I'm gonna put it back right there. And now I'm through to the other side. All right, we are ready to mount the outdoor antenna. Uh, the first thing we need to do is bring this cable into the attic. Um, I already have here 
a cable that went to the uh, dish up there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape these two together and then pull this in and pull the cable into the attic. I know if you don't have anything you can pull with, uh, another way of doing it is a, a PVC pipe, maybe an eight or 10 footer. Uh, tape this to the uh, pipe and then bring the pipe up into your uh, vents and then you can bring it in there and then crawl up in your attic, you can pull it the rest of the way. And that's another way of doing it. Um, but I, I'm gonna hook it up to here. We're gonna tape this up and pull it into the attic. And then what we're gonna do is hook it up to the booster and get the app hooked up and set with the uh, booster. Um, and then we're gonna find the proper direction where this should point to um, according to the app. All right, guys, we have the cable going up into the attic and into the uh, booster unit. I got the other end right here. We're gonna connect our directional antenna. Okay, um, next thing we have to do is download the Signal Supervisor app from either the Apple, Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Uh, install that on your phone, register the device, um, and follow the prompts on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the Signal Supervisor app and we're going to point the antenna in the direction. Well, actually, they tell you to go 360 degrees all the way around until you find the best reception. And you can see on your phone, uh, the, they got little meter readings uh, until they peak to the highest point, and that's where you want to point your antenna. Um, I know where my antenna is. I'm, I live out here in the country. I know my antenna is out in that direction, but I'm curious to find, you know, point it at the exact spot um, at directly at the antenna. But it's also very helpful if you go to uh, cellmapper.net. Uh, there's other uh, websites out there, but if you go to cellmapper.net, um, put in your zip code there and uh, your um, your carrier, mine's AT&T, uh, put your carrier in there, your phone carrier, and it'll show you exactly where the antennas are. You can see where your house is at, you'll know exactly where to point your antenna. Uh, but this app on this phone, the signal supervisor will, will pinpoint exactly where you have to point the antenna. So that's what we're going to do now. Alright guys, so once you download the app on your phone, uh, through the App Store, uh, Apple App Store, or the um, Google Play. Download, uh, register in the uh, app. Um, there's a quick installation guide in there, and you can breeze through that real quick. And then get to the point where it shows the signals. So let me show you that right now. <clears throat> now on your phone, you're gonna see these little meters here, okay? Now, you need to point your antenna in the direction of the cell tower. And when those, when those peak, you'll know exactly where to point your antenna. So in my situation here, I better hold it up a little higher. And you just want to go around like this until it peaks out. Now you gotta have to stand there for a little bit because I guess it keeps refreshing. But I know my tower is in this direction right here. When I point it in this direction, it start the, the needle start moving up. All right guys, so once you find where to point your antenna and the highest reading on your phone here, um, then you'll know where to point it. Uh, you're gonna have to mount it now on your mast or wherever you're gonna mount it to and point it in that direction. All right guys, so I have the antenna mounted up there and it's pointing in the right direction. 
All right guys, so everything here looks good. The alarm, power, and ISO is green. Nothing is flashing. Um, everything here looks good. The display will, um, the light will go out, but you'll still be able to see the numbers um, after a while. Um, so I got no alarms here. Everything looks good. Uh, you have to, it is extremely important, once you point the antenna in the right direction or where you know where it's going to be pointed to, the outside uh, antenna, all your inside ones have to be facing away from that. Otherwise you'll get um, oscillation. Um, like it's just, it's just like feedback. Uh, when you get a microphone and put it too, put it too close to a, a, a speaker, you get feedback. Same thing happens here if you face these both antennas uh, at each other. Um, so the outside antenna has to point towards the tower and the inside antennas have to be uh, facing away from the uh, outside directional antenna. So we got that done. The uh, bedroom, uh, extra bedroom uh, antenna is also facing away from the antenna. You can have them 90, de 90 degrees from each other is, is fine too. They just can't be facing each other. Uh, because then you'll start getting that ISO will start flashing, you'll start having all kinds of problems. So facing away, face them away from each other. I don't know enough about this to explain it to you guys, but there is a video, I'm going to put it in the uh, description, that explains what to do if you have problems here with uh, your certain carrier, if you're getting overloads and this and that. Um, you can adjust it here. Okay, I'll put that link in the description. It's a troubleshooting video. Okay, it's a short video and, it's, uh, and it'll explain what to do. Um, now, what we need to do is go outside, take a signal strength uh, on my phone, see what my phone's receiving from the tower. And then we're gonna come in here and see if we can at least bring that strength in here or improve it. All right, so I'm back on the porch where I'm in my settings. Go to general, uh, go to about phone, and go to network. And out here I'm getting minus 117. That is not good. Around 120 your calls will drop or you won't get any signal really. Uh, but I'm barely getting one bar. Um, so 117 is what we're getting out here. All right, so let's go to my settings. Let's go to general, about phone, and network. And as you can see, we got 96. So that is a huge, huge improvement. I know that's not great. Okay, now I'm getting 101. That's still good. Uh, that is a huge, huge improvement uh, compared to outside. At least I'm getting a signal in the house now and it's better than it is outside because the antenna is up higher than where, where I was standing, obviously, under the porch. So um, we're hovering around, uh, okay, now I'm getting 94. So between, I, I, if, if I can stay between 90 and 100 and, I don't know, five or 10, uh, I'll be happy with that. That looks pretty good. Great improvement. I shouldn't be getting any more drop calls now. And, um, um, I should be able to get phone calls now without getting missed calls. All right, guys, so this is going to work out great for me. Um, no more dropped calls, no more missed calls. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Um, I'm going to put a link to where to purchase this uh, in the description below the video. Uh, also, the extra antenna, I'm going to put that there also. Uh, any cables that, that are needed. Um, I'll put that there also. Uh, the, the cable for the extra antenna, what I use is an RG6 uh, regular uh, cable uh, wire uh, and bought the ends, the end connectors, not the F, but the end connectors. And they will connect their end male to uh, F female connectors and they'll connect to the uh, RG6 cables if you guys know what I'm talking about um, or you can buy the actual N uh, connector cable that's already uh, has the N connectors on them um, but I'll put that all in the description and I guess that's about it guys I hope you enjoyed the video 
uh, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel share this video and uh, I would greatly appreciate it guys and I'll see you guys in the next video